morning and welcome to the Abundant Love live stream of our Sunday School lesson. I am your mediator, Minister Robert Bush. To my left, I have Sister Natasha Hilliard. And on my right, I have Sister Marilyn Tan. We will have a word of prayer and then we'll dive into this lesson and see what we may be able to pull out of here that may help you through the next week. Um, Marilyn, would you lead us in prayer, please? Dear gracious Father, Lord God, first of all, Lord God, we give you glory, we give you praise for working us up this morning, Father God. We just love you, we adore you, we magnify you, Father God. Yes. We pray, Father God, that as we go throughout this day, Lord God, have your way, Father God. Have Bless the service, Lord God. Lord, go open eyes and ears to hear and receive your word, Father God. We give you glory, honor, and praise for that right now in advance, Father God, for what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our lesson is coming from 2 Corinthians, first chapter, verses 1 through 11. Um, Sister Tasha will read the first three, then Sister Marilyn will read the next three, then I'll read the next three, and we'll go on until we finish. Amen. First, or I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in, is it Achaia? Mm -hmm. Achaia. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Grace be unto you, and peace from our God, from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even, I'm sorry. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Amen. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. Amen. Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also, helping together by praying for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our belief, on your behalf. That concludes our scripture reading. Uh, Sister Marilyn, would you read our introduction? Have you ever needed to be comforted? I am not talking about just being soothed, but rather to be strengthened and empowered to rise above your struggle. In a world that is vehemently opposed to the God we represent, we go through trials and even persecutions as we serve Christ. If the Christian life is all roses, it is only because of the many thorns in the rose bush. Many people go through suffering and are desperate for comfort. What we need to realize is that Christ has suffered too, and he knows what we go through. It is futile to try to receive comfort from things such as alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, Food or anything else the world throws at us. 
Some try to read the latest books by popular self-help gurus, only to find that nothing works. The ways of the world provide no help for the child of God. The only one who can provide the comfort that will help us through the hardest trials and tragedies of life is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our lesson is broken down into three parts. Part one is comfort. Part two is affliction. And part three is deliverance. Part one basically deals with um, trials and tribulations that um, we have a tendency to go through as we go through life because uh, we are going to be tested because of our beliefs and what we stand for, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he said, because they hated me, they're going to hate you also mm -hmm. for what you stand for. And Paul has understood this because he has been through some issues in his time. Now, he's still at the Church of Corinth, and this is his second letter. But throughout, this is a continuing lesson, and he's going through all kinds of things with the people of Corinth. Mm -hmm. and he, but he's never turned his back on them. He's always supported them and tried to keep them on the straight and narrow to continue their, you know, their walk with God and to be on the positive side. Now he's faced with another dilemma where they are um, kind of not understanding what kind of uh, trials and tribulations that they may face. Mm -hmm. and. He's trying to give them an insight on some of the things that they're going to experience if they haven't already. So, to get into this lesson, uh, how did Paul end up in the apostolic ministry? <laughs> Well, it was Christ that called formerly Saul, Paul, on the road to Damascus. Yes. Yes, and he, uh, as you know, uh, Saul at the time he was not a believer of Christ. He right. um, downloaded Jesus, Christians, period. But yet he became one of the renowned worshippers and followers of Christ by that stop on Damascus Road. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sister Tasha? I think sometimes um, our trials and tribulations is what bring us closer to God. He had to actually go through mm -hmm. something um, on the road to Damascus for God to um, call him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I agree with you both 100%. Um, it was a test for him. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that he expected. It was probably the last thing mm -hmm. that he thought would happen, mm -hmm. considering what you know his initial plan was mm -hmm. and why he was even on the road to Damascus. He was on his way to because he had letters that was giving him permission to more or less corral Christians yes. and take them back to Jerusalem to be punished. Yeah. Yeah. So, who replaced Sosthenes from the 1st Corinthians as Paul's companion in 2nd Corinthians 1 and 1? I didn't understand that part, but I believe it was Timothy. Um, so I'm going to let y'all expound on that so I can get a better understanding. Uh, you were absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Timothy. Um, said, um, Paul had joined up again with Timothy when he considered him to be his son in faith. So they became mm -hmm. him together. 
where he was making that thing. He was learning from Paul. Uh, yeah, Paul was basically the hand man. He was the one who established the church and right. brought disciples with him. And basically, he had the same crew except for the interchanging of those two. Sosthenes was with the first group, the first Corinthians, mm -hmm. and he left on another journey, so he brought Timothy. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get into some, some real discussion now. <laughs> What is the overall theme of this week's passage of scripture? Basically, they want a summary. Um, what I wrote down was suffering with hope. Um, to know God went through, or Jesus went through, everything that he went through for us um, while he was here on this earth shows us that if he endured everything that he endured, we, we are able to endure it as well. Um, and with him and the Holy Spirit, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. Sister Mary? Um, basically, what we're going to be discussing uh, comfort and affliction. Um, of course, we all know that Jesus Christ was greatly afflicted for our sins. And we as Christians also will be considered. Uh, faced with affliction and persecution. So it's just giving us, teaching us, we're going to go through discussing comfort in that affliction and persecution. Uh, and what I got out of this is that um, we are all going to suffer mm -hmm. because of who we follow. And we just to know that there is comfort in him. Mm -hmm. He is the primary comforter. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter the depth or the scope or the height. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. you can go to God and God will provide comfort. Mm -hmm. Peace, tranquility. He, he, he settles the mind. He calms the spirit. He's just there for you when you need him. And there's nothing too hard for him. So who does Paul say is the source of all comfort? Uh, I guess we just answered that. <laughs> yeah, and it does say that God comforts us in all our afflictions, not yes. some of our afflictions, all. but we, he gives us comfort for any and everything, every situation that we need and we want, he's just right there for that. And we just kind of went to the next question. Absolutely, because yes. I want to get you all for being all comfort. He comforts us in everything. So what assurance do we have about sharing in Christ's sufferings? Sister Tasha. The assurance is knowing that, uh, first of all, he gets all the glory. Uh -huh. um, the assurance is that we come out stronger. Our faith is built um, upon the young, which makes us uh, more sh have more strength in him and our faith. Um, our walk is strengthened. And then by that way, we are able to bring alongside our brothers and sisters to help them through their afflictions as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, exactly what she said, basically, um, um, if we, we stay with Christ or we're with him, of course, we understand his suffering, then uh, we can also expect to share in his comfort. Um, Amen. Well, as Paul was talking with them, he was saying that, you know, you're going to go through some things, but we don't want you to be ignorant about what it may be. So we're going to try to more or less break open some of these situations that you may experience while you're going through this because there are so many ways you can be persecuted. Mm -hmm. 
and then there's so many different avenues that the world would throw at you more or less to say that you can do this and you'll be all right or you can do this and you'll be all right and it said right there that well it said in the introduction that uh there was no help for the child of god mm -hmm. because everything that the world throws at you is what the enemy is throwing at you because it's not to help you through it but it's to offer a substitute to take your mind off of what you're going through yes, yeah. mm -hmm. I like that. and that's that comfort mm -hmm. that he provided you got, got to have it yes. so how can your suffering help another person well, I can speak from personal experiences. Uh -huh. you got the <laughs> um, yes, you know, <laughs> so that's hence the testimony. When you go through something and you know that you know it, you know who brought you through it, because yeah. you know he was stepping through he pull us all the way out of it. So when you've been through, through something, then you can also comfort your brother or sister who is going through something similar to that. Yeah. That's part of that company thing that God gives us, you know? And sometimes we don't even know we're doing it, you know? He just equips us with that. Yeah. I think that um, I was going through a personal experience. Mm -hmm. um, going through a tough time in my life, and I prayed and asked God, why am I always the one? When is my valley going to be over with? And um, he gave me that I go through it to help others. Mm. I'm a helper. That's what I do. Um, and I didn't realize it until a few months ago <laughs> where somebody else needed help. And I wasn't able to help them monetarily. But I was able to give them the way to comfort. Uh, how he delivered me and brought me out of the same situation they were going in when they couldn't see what they were going through at the time they didn't see no way out and that's the same thing we do um, we don't see a way out when we're going through but then after we look back yeah. it was small that yeah. was something so minute but as you're going through it it's to bring others out as well yeah, man. Um, Paul was talking to the people at Corinth and he was talking about how serious the problem that him and some of the people that were with him were going through um, despair to thinking you know maybe a death sentence had been put on them that they might not survive and just giving up and it actually took them a little while to think about what they were going through and to realize that they were trying to rely on themselves rather than trusting in God. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of us make a mistake because we think that we can handle these things on our own sometimes. And true enough, God will give you the equipment to bring you through. Mm -hmm. But you can't forget how you got in there and how you getting through. A lot of us, well, me as one, okay. I've been in situations where I can remember saying, okay, so it didn't work that way this time. I'll try it this way and see what happens. A lot of times you come back and you end up doing the same thing. But you can't expect a different outcome if you continue doing the same thing. That's right. And he actually sat me down and he spoke to me and let me know that I'm not in it by myself. And that he's always been there. And all I have to do is ask. Mm -hmm. And you know, I for so long, I've, I've had a problem with asking for help. Thinking I could do everything on my own. 
wanting to try to do everything on my own, getting frustrated, you know, if I had hair, I probably would be trying to pull it out. But, you know, this, this is just things that we go through when we run into those situations and we can't see past what's in front of us to see the end. And God is sitting there on the side and he's saying, whenever you're ready, just ask me and we'll do this together. I, <laughs> I've run into some situations with different people that um, needed help. I've had some that asked me for help and a lot of times we always think it's money or, you know, can I borrow this or can I borrow that? And rather than allowing them to explain what kind of help they need, right. you start assuming yeah. and you're off on a different track than what they're actually asking for. And it's, it's hard sometimes because when you jump to those kind of conclusions, you alienate people from it. That's and true. then they, they, when they actually need you to help them out, it, they're not going to turn it back to you because of what you assumed the first time. That's so true. Um, I want to kind of expound on that a little bit. Well, you said you always thought you could do things on your own. I think it's amazing that we three on this panel mm -hmm. in our other lives, God set the comforter for us. Mm -hmm. And we sitting up here praising the Lord. It's just Amen. phenomenal right now. If the song says if I look back over my life and I think things over, yeah. how we can truly say that we're truly blessed mm -hmm. because of the comforter that was sent for us. Amen. You know, um, there's hope in our comfort. And so we are living testimonies. So because we can't do it by ourselves. I used to think that when I was back there. And I say, I don't need no help from nobody. I don't need nobody to do nothing for me. I don't need nobody to give me nothing. Well, I'm needing a whole lot, mm -hmm. mostly Jesus. But my mom told me, she said, yes, you need something. God made an ant and every little ant. I will never, ever forget that because she was right in that. Yes. And if it had not been for God sitting the comforter for us, we probably wouldn't be sitting here on this panel. Oh, praise amen. God. Amen. So, yeah, we, uh, fool's not going to get fed, so we ask. And we receive from God. Yes, yes. You got a comment, Sister Tasha. <laughs> um, I was just thinking about how um, Paul used the example of uh, when he was going through Asia. Mm -hmm. And I thought about um, Jesus being, they, they, they had to see something. I think we spoke about that last week. Uh, they had to have something in their face as far as uh, karma mm -hmm. to see something. So he used that as the example of you know him going through something and God being his comfort at that time mm -hmm. um, for the Koreans to believe that they have comfort. Uh -huh. um. Well, they were talking about um, Paul and his experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was basically speaking from personal experience because mm -hmm. Paul had, I mean, he'd been left on the side of the road for dead, been stoned, been persecuted, thrown in prison. And, and, you know, this was all after he had converted. Because before then, he had a run of the territory, mm -hmm. and he was basically just doing what he thought was right, mm -hmm. because he was working with the Sanhedrin, and they were, you know, more or less trying to enforce God's law, but they didn't know that they were breaking it themselves. Mm -hmm. And when he got on that Damascus road, he experienced something that it shook him up. Mm -hmm. 
and it put him in a position where he couldn't help himself, but he needed help. That's that, that, that despair. That's that place where you know what's going on, but there's nothing you can do about it. And he was put in that position, and he ended up having to sit in one spot and waiting for some help. And we get like that. We get into a spot where we can't see past what's in front of us. We don't see the big picture. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of stuck in that spot until we get some help. Not knowing where the help's going to come from. Mm -hmm. Same with Paul. He didn't know where his help was going to come from, but he, he didn't give up hope. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember who God sent to pray for him, but until he got there and got that prayer, he was stuck. Mm -hmm. Ananias. Ananias. And it said that when he prayed for him, it was like scales fell off his eyes. Mm -hmm. But this was God saying, okay, now that I got you where I need you, yeah. and you're listening to me, I've got something new for you that I need you to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, things in our lives happen to get our attention. God, you know, because we know he can intervene any time he desires. Absolutely. So sometimes he allows us to just let walk into a, something, you know, without intervening. But that will also sometimes distract us enough to get our attention that we've taken our eyes off of our comforter. Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. So um, that, you know, Paul knew who God was, but he didn't know when he was going to, you know, the uh, saving period was going to come. He said he felt like uh, he was going through a, a death sentence himself, you know, but yet he still, um, Christ who conquered death. There was nothing for him to intervene at any time. That was um, part of his testimony of mm -hmm. what he was going through. And he said that God has saved us mm -hmm. and he'll save us again. And it wasn't like one, for instance, it was like time after time after time after time. Yeah. And he started to realize that God's always there with me. Yeah. Yeah. And I could turn to him for things that I need. Yeah. Yes, yes Bishop. <laughs> Good morning, Sunday School. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, I am of the opinion that there's some things we can only learn about God through suffering. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, sometimes we develop things when the pressure is on or when we don't have an alternative to turn to. If you've got a plan B, um, you know sometimes you're not so worried about plan A going awry, but if plan A is all you have, uh, then you're more likely to give it more attention and, and more, uh, I can say, dedication. Mm -hmm. The psalmist said, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Mm -hmm that I may learn to basically obey your statutes. And so uh, many times God not only gets our attention, but God teaches us things through suffering that we can use when the suffering is over. And after you've been through enough scrapes, then the scrapes don't bother you so much when they show up. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I think all of us can testify that when we were younger, certain things that showed up kind of shook us, and now we go, okay, here we go again, because it becomes familiar to us. Yes. Amen. Uh, words of wisdom. And I totally understand um, being afflicted is 
definitely a lesson to be learned because nine times out of ten, it's a position that we put ourselves in. Mm -hmm. And any time that we think we know better than God, God is going to step back and let us learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how big or how small, mm -hmm. but you will learn something from it because you'll be stuck in a position where you won't see an answer, you won't see an ending, but you'll see the problem and the problem will still be in front of you. And then when God's ready to help you out, he's, he's always there. He's just waiting on you to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times it comes from um, God trying to help us change our perspective of him as well. Um, I wrote this stuff down. But um, I wrote down, don't be consumed by the weight of the situation or your suffering, but consume yourself with the presence of the comforter. Um, he wants us to pray more. He wants us to meditate more. He wants us to uh, read the promises that he has already given us in the Bible for that particular situation. Uh, worship more. Mm -hmm. So our, uh, our focus can be more on him and not the situation itself. Amen. Well, um, like he delivered, uh, you know, um, us from our situation, you know, um, I think that also if we put our hope and we courage and faith in God, that he will bring us through anything. But as Bishop expounded, you know, sometimes, you know, he was talking about giving it our attention. Um, it can be drastic. Yeah, it can. You know, um, and we heard it mentioned that I was wondering why, why me? Why is it always I? Mm -hmm. Well, why not? Right. Because, and that's all of us. So it's to teach us, to raise us, and to empower us with he, what he's already equipped us to do. So, yeah. And we are child of God, okay? Absolutely. What Christ went through, we are, what they call soul heirs mm. with Christ. So, what he suffered, we're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. The thing that's different is how we react to the suffering. Mm. Because see, everything that he went through, we're going to experience too. We're going to be persecuted, we're going to be hated, we're going to be tried. But he was one of those that he did not utter a word. He just went on and he did everything in love. I know as a person, me, myself, I've been in situations dealing with different people and they make it hard to love them. Mm. Even though they know you may mean good, they may have another agenda. They may not appreciate it. They may not want it. Mm -hmm. But we are to, I guess, be the bigger person in more or less be able to put that behind us and continue what we're doing as long as it's according to God's will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and God, I'm pretty sure we've discussed this, but it has how severe were Paul's personal suffering. That's where it says the suffering Paul endured. He, he said he, he felt it felt like a death sentence to him. Uh -huh. um, and at times when we go through stuff, I know somehow I'm like, 
you know, we sit and try to say, Lord, God, if you get me out of this, I'm going to do this thing again. And then he gets you out, and you do it again. But some things, he bring me out. I don't do those anymore. Amen. <laughs> you know, so Amen. It depends on how serious you are, because God, he, he wants us. He created us to praise and worship him. He Amen. wants us to make it into the promised land for him, that heaven. So he doesn't want us to suffer. We bring suffering on ourselves, as you indicated before. So mm -hmm. what do we say, Lord, and that it's also scripture about it's better not to make a vow to God than make a vow to God and not break it or break it. Mm -hmm. So be careful what you ask for. If you ask God to do something, he's going to do it. Sometimes you do it and sometimes you won't. Depends on what the severity of it is. That's the Amen. God we serve. Yes. So be careful when we say, God, you get me out of this, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I think the, the more that we go through things, the more he shows up. Um, I think they used Romans 20, or 5 and 20 in the lesson where uh, sin is abound, but grace did much more abound. Mm -hmm. So it was more grace every time we sinned. He yeah. gave you more grace. Mm -hmm. um, then later on in Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, he talked about his grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, his, and his power is perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. So we are to boast later on in that the same verse. Uh, boast more gladly of weakness. Mm -hmm. So we are to uh, witness and testify about our weaknesses. We are not to be ashamed of what we went through. Mm -hmm. But in order for us to get there, we had to cry out more. Lord, if you get me through this one more time. <laughs> yes. We had yes. to go through more and more uh, yeah. situations so it could become a great boast of weakness. Yes. Amen. And it's that same weakness that makes us stronger. Yeah. Yeah, when God brings us through it, you know, it just heightens our strength and our power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and he gets all the glory for that. And that's so, amazing how yeah. weakness can make you stronger. Yeah. <laughs> well, it says that um, we learn more from suffering mm -hmm. than we yeah. do in the victory. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's, it, it says that in the fire of the suffering, you find out, you know, you notice God's power as he's working through it. Because we, I mean, <laughs> we can get into some situations mm -hmm. and some of them can appear like a death sentence mm -hmm. and they can be humbling. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can really break you down to where you're begging for help. Lord, please see me through this. Yeah. Please. Change this situation, please bring me through this. But like you said, depending on the sincerity mm -hmm. will determine how much suffering you will go through. Because if you're sincere and God knows it, he, 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 he is a way maker. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, He'll make a way that you won't see. That's right. He'll use somebody you never expect. And he, he's just that kind of guy. He, but he's never going to leave you needing anything. Mm -hmm. He's always been a provider. And then he also says that he resists the proud. Yeah. And oh, yeah. James and gives, you, uh, gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. So... In you order to, to go to go through yeah. something, you have to remain humble at all times. That's but if right. you have more you have grace, to. the more humble you become. That's right. Amen. Amen. Sister Pierce. A lot of times when you suffer, you wait on God. A lot of times when you're suffering and you wait on God, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. God got into the fire with them. Right. So we got to stay in the fire. We got to continue to suffer. And continue to keep our eyes on the prize. Amen. 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 I want to. I want to. Yeah, I want to read. Amen. I want to read what it says. It says, "Our hope is set on God, and our faith in Him is fixed. Suffering cannot steal our peace and joy. 
We can surrender them by giving in to temptation or negative thinking, but they cannot be stolen from a child of God. Right. Remember that hope in the Lord is not wishful thinking. It is a sure thing. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. What is one reason why suffering comes to all believers? Hmm. I wrote down that it was to help keep us closer to Him. Amen. That is you one call. Man, that's a reason. Yeah, that's maybe one of the reasons. Keep them closer to Him as well as um, to to give uh, hope and belief for non-believers as well as our brothers in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you go through things, you can give somebody a word and it delivers you or it pierce your heart as well. So mm -hmm. it's, it's still, he's still giving you comfort even though you're comforting somebody else yeah. at that point in time. Amen. Um, and that is one reason why he does comfort us, to allow us to help comfort someone else. Uh, a reason why suffering comes to all believers is because of what they believe in, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I said it earlier, because they hated him, they're going to hate us yes. also mm -hmm. because of who we believe in and what we stand for. Yes. Yeah. Bishop. One reason all saints suffer affliction is for perspective. Mm. Wisdom is principle, get wisdom, but with all you get it, you get understanding. Perspective gives you understanding. You really can't appreciate a sunny day unless you've had a rainy day. Oh, yeah. So, so the tough time gives you perspective. Sometimes you think you're having it real tough and then God will show you someone mm. who's having mm. a much tougher time than you are, and it gives you, it grounds you in perspective. When, when I woke up this morning, um, uh, I started thinking about how fortunate we are in this country. Mm -hmm. We can get up without the rest, whether we want to or not, mm -hmm. come to the house of the Lord and worship with no opposition. The people in Ukraine woke up to a different reality. Amen. Amen. And so, sometimes when you compare affliction to your present situation, then you understand that through it all, God has been good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he, he has. has. Yes, yeah, he has. Amen. Thank you. Uh, that's, that is a very good way of stating the contrast between situations that we experience. What is the key to perseverance? Key to perseverance. Um, let me hear is the uh, key to perseverance is not to try harder or to wrestle more with our issues, but rather to turn to God in prayer. And we know scripture says we need to uh, pray without ceasing. Amen. So the more you persevere and press, the outcome um, with Christ is, is, is what's going to be the ultimate goal for your winning. Um, when you persevere, you get the reward at the end. So that's why. Amen. Um, I liked how Bishop spoke about the change in perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I found this. This is a paragraph. I found this paragraph uh, to be fitting. Um, courage is not the absence of fear, but it pushes it through spite of fear. Mm -hmm. um, Paul was courageous, but was not fearless. Mm -hmm. um, to persevere, you have to push through your fear, your mm -hmm. in spite of and doubt. You have to push through something to get to somewhere. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, perseverance is something that we all desire at different stages. 
depending on what you may be going through. Because without perseverance, you have a tendency to want to quit, to give up. And depending on what the reward is at the end of going through something, it matters a lot. Mm -hmm. Depending on what you're trying to achieve, yeah. depending on what the task may be and what it's going to take to get through it. Mm -hmm. uh, when people go through something and they can talk about it later, saying, okay, this is something that I went through. Mm -hmm. This is how I got through it. Mm -hmm. And this was what I got at the end. You know, this is what's, you know, oh. keeps, this is what kept me going, mm -hmm. that not to give up to, you know, say, okay, let me get my second win and keep pushing through this. This is something that we all long for in different areas, like mm -hmm. our journey right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to have perseverance mm -hmm. to make it. You know, I don't know anybody that's become a believer that knows what's in store at the end of this road mm -hmm. that don't want to try and persevere through it. Yeah. to make it into that place. Heaven, heaven, you, you hear so much about heaven and the majority of it, you can't even imagine. Mm. But it's a place that, you know, you, you say in your mind, I got to get there. Mm. Because of what I've heard from it and what I understand about it, it's a place that I want to be. Mm -hmm. And then the people that you'll see once you get there. People that left here long ago, people that you grew up with, people that you live with, you know, all the believers are gonna be there. Mm -hmm. And you will have recollection. Um. With the word perseverance, also it reminds me or compare it to the word press. And the Bible says, I press toward the call, the high calling of Christ Jesus. So perseverance and pressing are about the same because, we, you, again, like I said, you have an ultimate goal that you're going for. Um, and we talked about heaven. Yeah, so I'm pressing toward that high calling that's in Christ Jesus to make it. It's a, we're not, no one's immune to suffering. We're gonna all suffer. Yeah. You know, some one way or whether it's minute or you know, or you know, it's large. But then it's that press, I'm persevering to press on to yeah. Jesus. So yeah. just remember that yeah. it's, it's 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 so worth it. Mm -hmm. It is. I think it depends on uh the situation and how you're going through it. Mm -hmm. So when we were yet sinners. We wallowed in that thing. Yeah. We um we cried out to God even though we weren't we were living in that life, but we weren't believers. Yeah. We didn't have as much faith. We didn't worship him enough. We didn't um pray enough. We didn't seek the right guidance uh -huh. enough. Mm -hmm. Um but now that we are saints, yeah. um we can worship and then forget all about it, and then turn around and look like, okay, we got through that. Yeah, it, it's it's your perspective again, yeah. as Bishop said. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, um, can I have your final thoughts on this lesson? I enjoyed this lesson. Um, I. Um, a small thing for the little bit of So I can find it. Okay. <laughs> Concluding the lesson. Um, we initially started talking about Paul and his afflictions and his sufferings, and and his his deliver his comfort and then his affliction and deliverance out of all of that. Um, so ultimately, we 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 learned hopefully today that. Our sufferings 
will take us to the place of perseverance and high calling in Jesus. And uh, God's priority for our good for primary internal and uh, internal life, because this is just all temporal down here on earth. Amen. Okay, I'll read a snippet. I can't find I should have highlighted it. <clears throat> there are many ways in which we might be able to help fellow believers with the words of consolation, physical labor, financial support, and so on. However, we should not neglect prayer. That's something we can always do. Prayer is an appeal to the only one who can ultimately help when a person needs peace and consolation. Um, we are to be that intercessor of prayer, uh, and go into intercessory prayer for people um, only because when we come out or when they go come out of that situation, God gives the glory and he also proves that I'm still here. I'm yeah. still working. Mm -hmm. um, so continue to have faith and believe and know where your help comes from. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I was uh, with the dog that to remember that you always have a comfort present. And he's just waiting for you to ask. But he is there. Like I said, he calms the spirit. He calms the soul. And he's, like they say, never forsaking you and will always be with you. He is the epitome of an asset that we all have access to. But whether or not you choose to use this access is totally up to you. And you our life comes down to a choice, basically. We have a choice in everything that we do. And I'm not gonna lie, some of our choices are not always the wisest, mm -hmm. but we still have a choice in the matter. And if we would place God first in our choice making, we would make the better choices. And as far as comfort, he's, he's there to soothe your soul and to ease whatever pain you have, mm -hmm. to comfort you, to put you in a peace of mind where you're <coughs> subtle. And basically, he's given us the help to help others. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that um, we have to accept okay that's going to wrap it up for us I'm glad that you could tune in with us we hope that you will be with us at 1045 for our morning worship I am your mediator Minister Robert Bush your sister Tasha Hilliard and Sister Marilyn Stan, we hope you have a blessed day and may God bless.